In this lesson, we'll be creating a bootstrap carousel. The carousel is a plugin that cycles through HTML elements. It is typically used for slideshows as seen in this example. We have a series of car pictures. Each car picture is displayed one at a time before automatically transitioning to the next picture. Each picture also has a title and a description. We can manually cycle through the images by clicking the left or right links, or by clicking the carousel indicators. To make a carousel, we first start with a div and give the div an ID. We've given the ID, we've given this div the ID carousel. This is important and will be used later on for the carousel controls. So although we've named the ID carousel, you can call it whatever you like. Set the div class to carousel and slide. Also create a data write attribute and set it to carousel. The carousel class specifies that the div contains a carousel. The data ride attribute will make it so the images start cycling as soon as the page loads. Next, create an ordered list element and set the class to carousel indicators. The carousel indicators are the small circle icons that indicate how many slides there are. They also allow users to manually toggle through the slides and provide an indication as to the active slide. So we can see here that as the images switch from one to another, the carousel indicator also changes. It becomes highlighted based on the active carousel. We need to create four list items because we have four images. Each list item needs to have a data target attribute set to carousel. Notice that the value of this attribute points to the ID of our carousel div. So here, this, this matches, the data target matches our ID for the main carousel div. Now each item also needs to have a data slide to attribute. The value of this attribute will define which slide to go to when that indicator is clicked. So the first item will be will go to slide 0, the next will go to slide 1, 2, and 3. So the numbering system does start from 0. So slide 1 is actually 0, and then 1, 2, and 3. We've created a class and, and set it to active. Now this is on the second item and I'm just going to cop, cut that out and paste that onto the first item. So this will highlight the first indicator because that's where the slideshow starts. So you can see that when I, re I refresh the page and you can see that the first indicator is active on page refresh. So after our ordered list, we have a wrapper for the slides. After our ordered list, we create a wrapper for the slides. Create a div and set the class to carousel inner. Create a role attribute and set it to list box. Now we can start creating the divs that will contain the images or content of the slideshow. Create a div and set two classes, item and active. Next, create an image element and set the source to the location of your first image. Make sure that the images, images are contained in the same directory or a subdirectory relative to the location of your HTML file. Also specify the width and height of the image. Create another div and set the class to carousel caption. 
Now create a heading for the title and a paragraph for the description nested within the carousel caption div. And that's it. So what we can do now is we can copy and paste this entire block of code to create the other slideshow content. So here we have four images. So each one you can see is, is more or less the same. The code is almost identical. All you have to change is the source of the image and the heading and description for each slide is also different. Also keep in mind that you, you only need to set the active class on one of the slides. So that'll be the slide that is active when the page initially loads. Okay, so one, two, three, and four items. You can have as many as you like. Once complete, we can go ahead and create our left and right control links. Start with an A element and set the class to left carousel control. Create an href attribute and set it to the ID of the main carousel div. So remember we called it carousel. Create a role attribute and set it to button and a data slide attribute and set it to uh, previous PREV. -E now to create the arrow icon, create a span and set the class to Glyphicon, Glyphicon Chevron left. And that's what's going to give us this, this little icon here. And create an area hidden attribute and set it to true. Now for the second, for the right side arrow, you can basically copy and paste this block of code. All you have to change is instead of a left class, set it to right. Instead of previous, set it to next for the data slide attribute. Change Glyphicon Chevron left to Glyphicon Chevron right. And that's it. Now there's just one more thing to do before we can test this in your browser. We're going to have to scroll up to the head tag and you're going to create a style sheet and add the following rule. Here, the width definition will make it so that the carousel content occupies 80% of the carousel. The margin auto will center the content. So if we were to increase width to 100, then we would have no margin on the left and right side. You can see it still works. We still see our arrows, but there's no spacing. And you can set the value from anywhere from 0 to 100%. And that's it. You can now save your file and preview it in your web browser and your carousel should be working. The carousel is responsive. So if, you, if we were to expand the size of our web browser, the carousel expands to the size of our container. And in this case, we're using a fixed width container. So if we were to use a fluid container, it expands to the full size of the screen. The same is true if we shrink the browser. Okay, again, you can see it's fully responsive.